it's important to know that it's not just another club organization. It's not, and it's also not a secret club. It's something that was built out of necessity. It's part of our history. Um, you know, it's, and it's not very far removed. Like my grandparents were in internment camps. So it's something that has great meaning for a lot of people in that it's not just about the basketball part. It's about keeping our history intact. Growing up, basketball was just strictly about fun. It was about seeing your friends. Uh, playing was, you know, just to get out and get some exercise and just have some fun. Um, and that's what I, I really appreciate about the Asian League was that there wasn't any pressure to, you know, to win or to you do, you know, score 50 points a game or something. It was all about just getting out with the community and uh, it was something that Everyone did, you know, all, anyone in the GA community would, um, if you met them, it's the question you ask, it was, oh, what team do you play for? Or you see people like, oh, I remember I play against her on this team, and even outside the basketball context. So, yeah, being in the GA community for basketball was mainly about the community. And then as I grew older and started to become more focused on basketball, it was a great place to hone my skills and to get, you know, practice in. But even then, it still was about the friendships and the connections you make. I grew up playing in um, a league called Seo, and so that was mo mostly Japanese American. I think it now has expanded to a lot of other Asian Americans. Um, and again, it was something that my older sisters did. And so again, I thought I was just following in their footsteps. It was a league that was all Asian, all Japanese American. Um, so I just thought it was two different leagues. That and you know my grade school, I just thought, okay, one has all Japanese Americans and one doesn't. And um, until later, I asked my dad, well, why? You know, why is it like that? Um, and he said, well, back in, you know, years ago, they didn't allow Japanese Americans to be in the league. So then it all kind of made sense. Now looking at it and seeing the impact it had, you know, for me, basketball wise, um, it now just shows the importance of our values and our traditions and our culture, you know, um, that we're all kind of raised in a similar way, whether we wanted to talk about it or not. But, you know, my dad, as a Japanese American, raised us on discipline, um, commitment, not quitting, not giving up, and, and work ethic. And I think when um, we got older, we started to realize, like, you know, we kind of were all raised in a similar way. And I think now it's great to still have relationships like that with within the Asian, you know, um, Asian leagues, and, um, and the importance of keeping our traditions and values alive. It did help seeing Natalie like out there because she's four years older than me. So when I saw this tiny little Japanese girl like uh, at UCLA at a high Pac-10, Pac-12 now level, it um, it definitely like solidified like I can do this. One, I like loved and appreciated everybody that came out from like the very first time I stepped out for my very first home game. Like the stands were full of Asian Americans and my te to the point where my teammates were like, damn, Jamie brought all of little Tokyo with her, you know? Like it, it was really cool just to see how much support we had. Um, and um, I do, like I, for me, like it, it's a deep appreciation. Like they gave me so much these leagues that that's the least I can do to kind of give back is to at least show these boys and girls like you can do it, you know? Um, also on the other end of the spectrum, it's kind of like, it was great and I loved it and appreciate it, but on the other end, it kind of put a, little, a lot more pressure on me. So there was definitely times where like, I felt like I was letting them down if I didn't play well or you know, had a bad game. Like, it wasn't just on me or my team, it was my university and the entire Japanese American community, which was kind of tough. There's two Japanese American girls that I played against. Kristen Iwanaga was at Cal, um, and then Corey Mizusawa was at Oregon, um, which was kind of cool. I, like, I loved it. I thought it was so cool. And I think because you're so connected in the Japanese American community, so of course I knew who they were. Um, and it, and um, one time they did like a showdown of me and Corey, you know, like the, ja I forget what it was, some kind of Japanese showdown or something when we played against Oregon versus USC. Um, but, I, I thought it was great. I mean, obviously we wanted to win. <laughs> you wanted to play better than everybody else and beat them. But at the end of the day, like to see two of us out there, you know, even out of out of a full roster of two teams, like 
that's way bigger than you know just like us playing out there it was just it means so much to like our community i didn't know jamie before but then i started following her obviously when her career um, took off at usc and she was so successful there um, and then for her to move on and play too as well like i just thought like wow that's really really amazing um, for what she did just because we went through the same similarities and then with allison i coached allison so that to me was a proud moment because I saw her grow, you know, and I saw her do things that maybe at some point she didn't know that was going to happen for her. And she was able to get through all of the non-believers and all the, you know, um, the people that, you know, didn't think she was going to make it. And again, like you said, we're not very popular within the visual, <laughs> the visual division one of basketball. So um, just proud of them, both of them. I had a friend who's sister was playing in the same club organization that Natalie was coaching and her dad knew that I played and he told my dad oh Natalie Nakase is a coach and I you could have told me she was coaching anywhere I would have dropped everything to go I had no plans of playing club I just wanted to get coached by Natalie she was I was remember watch I watched her play in uh, college I, when I was little I would go to games and I remember just being like well there's someone who looks like me who's on the team like maybe that could be me one day and if it wasn't for her I don't know if I would have even thought that it was a possibility it was just because I saw her that it was just like planted a seed that maybe one day I could do that and um, to actually get to meet her I was kind of starstruck <laughs> in the beginning and uh, but now that I can call her a mentor and a friend is really unbelievable Having someone in your shoes that's going through what you did and playing the exact same leagues that you did and doing what um, kids are doing right now, I think it does have an impact. I know for a fact because that's what happened to me. Like seeing Natalie and knowing she played BFW and she was growing up playing Asian League and Jamie's four years, three years older than me, but I knew she played, you know, growing up and I've watched her play and, I, and I've heard her name everywhere. It gave me the idea like, wow, it could happen. It's the representation thing. You know, you see someone like you, it gives you hope. And that definitely was a case for me. So I know that other kids probably are affected the same way, whether it be in basketball and other sports and media. Um, just having that representation is really important to see people that look like you. It was because of Natalie's uh, belief in me and her commitment to helping me get there that really made me think like, okay, if I push hard enough and I work hard that it could happen one day. The JA community was great. Uh, I, I definitely felt the support. Um, I remember there was a game, and I, I played for Venice, and there was a game I remember there was a young Venice team that was sitting near the sidelines, and they started cheering for me when I walked out, and it was, it was really touching because I remember I was in their shoes, you know, 10 years earlier in my Venice jersey cheering for college players, and um, it made me realize, like, I was almost doing what Natalie did for me. And it felt like a really big responsibility because I knew how important she was to me and my life and my goal setting. She's showing that it doesn't matter your gender or your race. If you do a good job, you can get recognized for it. And she's really making people see like, oh, you don't have to look a certain way or be a certain way to have an impact or to help our club. And it's just so much fun to see, you know, seven foot NBA players looking down at her while she's telling them something and respecting her opinion and wanting to learn from her. It's, it's amazing. And I like to say that she yelled at me first. And <laughs> it's so, I'm so proud of her and I, I'm, I'm so thankful that I can say that I was, I got to see her make these steps and just continue to watch her journey. I've had friends and I've had family members come to me and say like, what you're doing is ridiculous. What you're doing doesn't make sense. Why don't you just coach? I've heard, within the past seven years, I've heard, why don't you just coach a women's team? Why don't you coach in the WNBA? Um, wouldn't it be easier for you to just get paid doing this? It's kind of fun to do things not the norm, you know? It's kind of, it's kind of really interesting to do things that are different. And I guess that's what I'd also would want to pursue with 
explain it to the youth. Like you don't have to follow what you always see. You know what I mean? Go out there and, and do something no one's ever done. Go out there and discover something that's never been discovered before. People just ask me to come and you know speak or come and, and coach at their clinics and their camps and stuff. Um, I was just getting recognized, I guess, for the position that I was in. And I think uh, for me, Allison, Jamie, and for uh, you know women like us, like that's important. That's an important step for us um, to make sure we speak out, but at the same time, we help. I think that's the biggest thing is, yeah, we can be in this certain stage or a certain position, but if we don't go out there and actually help the ones that want to be helped, then I don't think we're really impacting anybody's lives. And so my whole thing is if girls do want to, you know, play in division one or division two or whatever, whatever competitive level is like, I would love for them to come and reach out to me and ask me what I did. Um, because that's the thing that doesn't get recognized is all the hard work, all the sacrifice, everything that I did, my childhood was not normal at all. Like, and what people see are the results, but they don't understand like all the things that I did when I was a kid, you know? So that's what I would love to speak, you know, about or, or talk about is how can they do it, you know, more rather than just get there. I've been trying to get more Japanese American girls, or kids, even boys too, to come out, um, see games. I've been trying to connect the team more with our community. It's funny because the, the team, the coaching staff and the staff know about our JA leagues. They know that there's a, a, a group of kids there that have potential to be um, supporters, to potentially players one day, uh, starting because of Natalie, because they knew because of Natalie and then I came along and then, so they know there's an untapped uh, community. And so when I brought the idea to them of trying to connect them with the J community, they were all about it, which is really nice to see how supportive they were about it. And I wanted to, the main reason I wanted to do that was to expose kids to the college atmosphere because that's how I grew up and I have really good memories of going to games at Poly Pavilion with my parents and just seeing the games, seeing Natalie play, uh, just to feel the atmosphere of what it's like in college. And if I hadn't had that, I don't know if that would have even been a seed in my mind that I would want to do that one day because I wasn't exposed to any other um, college level basketball except for watching games when I was growing up, I didn't have anyone who played at the next level. I didn't know anyone because I didn't meet Natalie until high school. So that was my only exposure. So I wanted kids to be able to have the opportunity to see that and then also to have a community event. But I think now with it being more accepted that Asian people can play and that they've seen people have success on the next level, I think that in itself will help maybe uh, validate recruiting more uh, Asian American players uh, and then hopefully from there it will the numbers will go up but I do think it will take a while for it to start taking a foothold <laughs> unfortunately but we're on the right track because if you compare now to when I was growing up it is completely different it is it's really great to, you could go to a lot of different avenues a lot of different venues to see Asian American people play whereas before Natalie was the only one that I knew about. The end of the day, like you can't deny talent, you know, at whether it doesn't matter what color, race, and any anything you are. Um, so I do feel like, you know, when when you do find those special special athletes, like Japanese, Asian American or not, like they're gonna make it. You know what I mean? With the right attitude and the skill set. So I do, and and I know, like coming from our background, we have the work ethic. We have, you know, all the resources to help us out and to get to that next level. Um, so that the work ethic's not an issue, you know. Um, but I do think. Yes, having Jeremy, having these players out there is going to open the eyes to so many other coaches and, and players for the respect that, you know, I feel like that Asian Americans deserve. Um, and we will, I do think that there will be some more representation. What's well, great about this is there is no plan. There is no perfect plan. There's no perfect schedule. There's no timetable. I think whoever is going to end up being um, a woman in the head coaching position or a Japanese American or uh, another ethnicity to be in that, 
It's just the person's going to be the right person. The person's going to earn that spot. And I think that's more important um, than anything.